five minutes with Eric. So I just did a one minute and the topic is you've inherited shares in a corporation. And the thing is, it's not an inheritance question. It's not a probate question. It's not an estate question. It's not a family question. It's a corporate question. So dad dies and dad had purchased a multifamily. It had six units. They're all rented out. It's in a very nice location. The multifamily was always owned by a corporation, which by the way is a, a good suggestion. Now, quick point. Generally, people use either LLCs or corporations, and the reason is because it allows you extra protection. It's called limited liability. Um, and to boil it down, if everything goes wrong, all you can maximum lose is what's ever in the company, not your personal savings, your personal you know, property, your other properties, your other investments, your other companies. So all that you put at stake is what's in that company. Now, what is the price for that? Everything comes with a price you have to treat it like a real business. And that's where people get caught up all the time. It's easy to spend $125 and create an LLC, but if you're not following any of the business rules, then the question that somebody coming after you someday will ask the judge is, your honor, why should you afford him the, the luxury, the protection of the limited liability if he's not following any of the basic rules? Now, dig a little deeper, LLCs have much many fewer rules, much fewer rules than a corporation, right? Corporations are old. They come from an old century. Literally, they come from the 19th century, whereas LLCs were created in the 70s. And LLCs don't have many rules. Corporations have lots of rules. So here's the story. Dad dies, and in his will, he says, 10% uh, to my daughter in the company, 10% to my son, and 80% to my, uh, my wife. It happens to be the stepmom, the second spouse. And so now the, 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 the widow, she's the president, secretary, treasurer, sole director, and majority shareholder, right? And you have to realize I'm using corporate terminology because that's what this is. She is now the majority shareholder of a Florida corporation, which she has complete control of as the sole director and as the sole officer and as the president. Okay, so what does that really mean? Well, the minority people, right? If she was 100%, then this wouldn't be a story. If she was 100%, then she doesn't have to answer to anyone. But the minority people, the two 10% people, they have rights and they are called minority investor rights. And those minority investor rights are numerous. And for example, very basic, they have the right to copies of any corporate resolutions, right? Like what is the company up to? Rights to tax returns, rights to financial statements, rights to loan documents, rights to know about big, big uh, transactions, right? And so for example, if the majority person goes and takes out a million dollar loan against the assets of the company, that seems pretty important. That sounds like something that you should at least notify and probably get the consent of the minority people. Well, in my story, that's what they do. They take the million dollars and they actually do send over a piece of paper to, to be signed by the minority people. But the thing is, the minority people, this has been seven years since dad died, the minority people are like, wait a minute, we've never seen a tax return. We've never gotten a single update. We, we don't know anything what's going on with this company. So why is stepmom sending us a piece of paper asking us to approve a million dollar loan? You know what? I think we do need to get our hands on some records. So sure enough, we got our hands on the latest tax return and it is completely different. The, so first things first, they always thought it was a C Corp. This corporation had been registered as an S Corp. On an S Corp tax return, an 1120S, it'll tell you the percentages of the owners. Well, guess what? It's just had evil stepmom 100%. So they're like, wait a minute, we aren't even on here as owners. And then it showed on the, there's a, there's a section for a balance sheet. So the million dollar loan from the bank, that's a liability. An asset, however, was loan to shareholder, another million dollars, meaning that the lady had somehow taken a million dollar loan and nobody knew about it. So now we've got $2 million, one as a liability, one, believe it or not, as an asset. I guess they kind of in, in accounting world would offset each other, but the end of the story, that lady owes both, both of those million dollars back. So again, this is not gonna be an inheritance question. This doesn't come down to what dad's will said. It's not going to be anything other than a corporate question. We're going to look at the corporate law. In the absence of a shareholders agreement, we're going to default to the corporate statute, in this case, Florida's corporate statute. And we got to look at the minority rights and we're going to enforce the minority rights. And we're going to ask a lot of tough questions. And just pretend it wasn't your evil stepmom. Let's just pretend you were a 10% investor in a company 
and you found out that the president had taken a million dollar loan without telling anybody. Sounds like that would be, that would make some waves and some people would get upset. So guys, please leave a comment below if any of this resonates with you and hopefully, well, hopefully one day I'll be doing an update on uh, this saga uh, as it develops. Thanks everyone.